like I say, go to the Remix button, hit the Remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad. Well, uranium-238 is one of many isotopes of uranium. There are only three natural ones, and uh, they occur throughout the universe like fairy dust. And uranium is made in very energetic and violent star processes where other atoms are smashed together in a kind of a snowball. And there is tremendous amounts of energy in the nucleus. Um, uranium dispersed throughout the Earth has been decaying uh, for the four and a half billion years that the Earth has been here. And these tiny amounts of energy, basically heat, have melted parts of the interior of the Earth and made it possible to have a magnetic field. It's also responsible for volcanoes erupting and for the continents moving around on the surface of the Earth, which is called plate tectonics. Um, uranium, which is uh, natural radiation, the, the isotopes that occur in nature, and um, the background natural uh, radiation is, uh, we have to say, natural background levels are pre-1905 because since then man has been introducing man-made radiation and extra amounts of radiation into our environment. Well, Hanford has 200 square miles of contaminated groundwater uh, below the site there, and that is spreading over time because the contaminants in the soil are leaking at a constant rate into the, uh, you know, into the groundwater. I know this sounds incredible to people, but there are 40 miles of unlined trenches at Hanford, if you stretch them end to end, into which our federal government your government was dumping radioactive waste from nuclear weapons production and its own reactors until the year 2004 when we put those pictures um, on air and in our campaign literature for Initiative 297. Um, it's been against the law for decades for a municipal government to dump un in municipal garbage in unlined landfills, but our federal government thinks it's okay for radioactive waste even though it seeps right out of those trenches. And, and that stuff is all moving through the soil to the Columbia River. They're, what they're not telling the public is that they also l deliberately dumped out of the high-level nuclear waste tanks in the 1950s and 1960s billions of gallons of liquids into the soil. And it is very, very toxic. It is radioactive. It includes uranium that with half-lives of hundreds of thousands of years and plutonium and technetium 90 and strontium 90 and technetium 99 excuse me and all sorts of chemicals as well and um, it's a witch's brew of deadly wastes and it's all moving towards our lifeblood the Columbia River. Uh, this is probably the most dangerous stuff on the planet ever. Uh, very very small quantities of this waste. Um, and it's been said that a Dixie cup full of this waste in a crowded restaurant, everyone would be dead in the restaurant inside of an hour. If, even the amount that would fit on the leg of a fruit fly uh, is considered a problem dose. And that's happened at Hanford. Fruit flies have landed on contaminated materials and then flown off to go to the lunchroom and deposit contamination on food and on tables and whatnot. And they've had to evacuate a 20 acre area at the Hanford site because of uh, hot fruit flies and wasps. So this, this waste in these tanks is very dangerous in small quantities and it has another feature which is it's dangerous for very very long periods of time. Bush administration obviously has a war or two to pay for. And they're cheaping out on protecting public health and safety at the Hanford site. They at this point intend to empty one tank per year, but do the math, 170 tanks left to go to empty out over 100 years to empty out the, the tanks at Hanford. I mean, no way will those tanks last that long. I mean, one small earthquake out there could spell disaster for this region. I think you said the Hanford was getting for cleanup $2 billion a year. Yes. And I think that's what we spend per day on the war in Iraq. I yeah, that's, that's about right. Uh, 
Yeah, we, yeah, we like to say that they spend that by breakfast in Iraq. Though it's unlikely anyone will ever set off a nuclear device on top of the school, that's what they prepared for today. Together with the Seattle Police Department, the State Patrol, and the Health Department, the National Guard got ready to deal with a weapon of mass destruction. It's a simulated exercise that we had an explosion on the top of the community college with a radiation component to it. So our team is called in to assist in identifying the radiation source, the isotopes. One of the most serious abuses of human rights has come through the Pentagon's development of, production of, and use of depleted uranium munitions. These munitions have, have, have created an unending toll of casualties wherever they've been used, that the mere use of such munitions constitutes an offense against humanity. Uh, we're talking about something that will never go away is an aluminum model of one tank round that's fired by an Abrams tank. This is aluminum. If this was actual, this thing would be over 10 pounds of solid uranium. We know contaminated with plutonium, neptunium, and americium. You fire one of these rounds, 40% breaks up into dust and oxides that be inhaled, ingested, absorbed, contaminate air, water, and soil. The United States Army Environmental Policy Institute, which was co-located here, confirmed that in their 1995 report. They stated, quote, there is no way to reduce the toxicity of uranium munitions. And they ignore it and continue today. First of all, I'd like to mention that DU, depleted uranium, had a prior name, and it was DOLRAM. All the military manuals refer to it as DOLRAM, D-U-L-L-R-A-M, which is depleted uranium, low-level radioactive material. Well, they so eloquently removed the LLRAM and just call it depleted uranium now and remove the low-level radiation part of it, uniquely enough. I don't know how they got to go hide that part. I don't know where the science was that allowed them to take those last four parts of the acronym off. Because we know that the blood, the blood donor system has been contaminated. We know that the organ donor system is contaminated. If you have a returning soldier coming from this battlefield, and what they like to do in the military is they like to do command-directed blood donors. The whole commander will say, hey, everybody go down to Red Cross today, go to the gym, give them some blood, and you can have the rest of the day off. All right, we get the day off. Soldier loves a day off. So he goes down and gives up the blood, but the blood is contaminated. You know? And then the blood goes into the blood donor system. And then you want to get a kidney from a healthy little 21-year-old who just returned from the combat field. But the kidney is the most exposed uh, organ to these heavy metals because I mean, the fluids are pushing them through to excrete and like that, and they just rip through these organs. It's a, this is going to be around long after the, even the human experience. Because they had no idea that these particles were so small that they were going through their filters. They were breathing them and they were ingesting them. And these soldiers have, you know, alpha-emitting particles lodged in their lungs and all over their body. And, and uh, you know, the, the qualitative result or the end result is that, they've, you know, they've had children that were born with deformities, incredible deformities. Some people have described it that we will be at war with Iraq till the end of Earth because we cannot turn off the weapons that we used against Iraq. This is the time test. You have to be able to stop the weapons at the end of the war. Depleted uranium has a half-life of 4.5 million years, so um, we are at war with Iraq for the end of time. So I want you to remember something. If you don't remember anything else tonight, there is no safe level of radiation, period.